What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna answer the question of do software engineers ever write algorithms or do the kinds of algorithms that you see in coding interview problems on the job? This is a question that I think a lot of people ask themselves. I certainly did before I landed my first job. And I think that the reason people wonder this is because either they really enjoy algorithms and they're wondering, hey, am I gonna get to do that on the job? Or maybe they're wondering, are these algorithms that I'm doing for coding interviews ever gonna be used on the job? Either way, it's a very valid question and fear not because your friendly neighborhood Quem dog is gonna give you an answer to that question. Now to clarify, here I'm not talking about engineers who are super unique, like engineers who are working on a research team developing the next generation of algorithms, or quants who are developing trading algorithms. No, I'm talking about your normal software engineers, the kind of software engineer that I was at Google, at Facebook. That's what we're talking about. And so the short answer to this question of whether or not normal software engineers write algorithms or work with algorithms on their everyday job is, wait, one second. Oh, sorry, I just noticed that you, you forgot to smash the like button. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, might as well, right? It just takes two seconds, you can just click it, it'll turn blue with a little thumbs up button, just smash it. Wait, you, you did it? Okay, great. Yep, awesome, perfect. Yep, thumbs up, smash it, great, okay. So, okay, where was I? So the short answer to that question is, <laughs> The short answer to that question is yes. Normal software engineers are gonna write algorithms on their everyday job. That's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you found it informative. Like I said, don't forget to smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. I'm fucking with you. Obviously it's not the end of the video. Imagine I had actually ended the video there. What would you have done? Okay, going back to the actual topic of this video, I'm gonna take this video seriously from here on out. Maybe not. The short answer is yes, most software engineers will actually find themselves at least a few times, let's say in a year, writing an algorithm or working on an algorithm style problem. And I think the best way to kind of convey this to you is to show you or to share with you a few examples of when this has happened for me. So I'm gonna share with you three examples of algorithm style work that I've done on the job, one of which happened at Google and two of which have happened on AlgoExpert. And by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews, check out my company AlgoExpert. Go to AlgoExpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. So for the first example, let's start with one of the AlgoExpert ones. This is something that I've mentioned previously on this channel, but if you're familiar with AlgoExpert, you know that we have a questions list page where we have our list of questions questions. You can group the questions by category so you can see all of the questions pertaining to arrays or all of the questions pertaining to binary trees, to linked lists. You can group the questions by difficulty, easy, medium, hard, very hard, etc. You can group the questions randomly so we generate a random order for you. That way you're not influenced by the category or by the difficulty. And you can reorder your questions. So no matter how you're grouping them, you can reorder them and your order is saved. Now what's happening Happening behind the scenes on this page and to enable this functionality is a lot of algorithm style work. Because it turns out that at the API level, at the very beginning when you've got a new user going on the platform, all that we really have is a list of questions, the algo expert questions, and each question has metadata. So for instance, a particular question has a category associated with it. It's got a difficulty associated with it. And then based on this simple list of questions with metadata on each question, we have to, on the front end, basically bucket all the questions according to each category or according to each difficulty or to some sort of random order that we do have to store. And to do this, we have to write some sort of algorithm. And I'm gonna spare you the implementation details, but you can imagine that there's a lot of iterating through all of the questions, restructuring them in a way that we can easily access them, storing their order, storing their order per category, per difficulty, per column, in the random order. There's a lot of stuff happening that's exactly the kind of stuff that you might imagine in an algorithm style coding interview problem. And really here, I wanna emphasize that when we were writing the code for this questions list, when I originally wrote it, and then recently when we revamped the questions list, our other front end engineer basically 
rewrote a large portion of it when he implemented the random order, actually. And both of us, it really hit us how different that type of work was compared to the rest of our typical work on AlgoExpert, precisely because it was so algorithm heavy. I have this little hair here that like won't go down. The second example of algorithm style work that I've done happened at Google. Now, a lot of you know that when I worked at Google, I worked specifically on the front end on various user interfaces of Google Cloud Platform products. One of those products was a product called Google Cloud PubSub. We actually mention it on Systems Expert. If you're preparing for a systems design interviews, check out systemsexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. So on PubSub, there are these entities called PubSub Topics. And the long story short, I'm gonna simplify things here. There's data that goes through these PubSub Topics, they're called messages, that gets stored. And on PubSub, you can decide at the topic level where you want this data to be stored, in what region of the world that Google Cloud Platform supports do you want this data to get stored in. So for instance, you might say, I want all my messages going to a particular PubSub Topic to be stored in North America and in Southeast Asia, but not in Europe. Now on top of that, at the Google Cloud Platform organization level, so for instance, AlgoExpert, we use Google Cloud Platform to host our entire website for all of our infrastructure. We have the AlgoExpert organization on Google Cloud Platform. At the organizational level, you can set a policy that says, I only want my data in this organization to be stored in particular regions. So for instance, you might say at the organizational level, I only want data to be stored in North America. And so when I was at Google, I had to implement this feature that basically showed on the user interface of Cloud PubSub, when you selected one or multiple PubSub topics, whether or not the regions that these PubSub topics allowed data to be stored in matched the regions at the organizational level. And specifically, we had to display three sort of buckets, whether or not your topics regions matched exactly the organization's regions, whether or not your topic allowed storage in more regions than the organization, or in fewer regions. And as you can probably start to tell, there was a lot of bucketing involved, kind of similar to the questions list on AlgoExpert, and it involved writing some sort of algorithm. And I remember when I was working on that feature, I remember specifically thinking, wow, this is very different than my typical front-end work. This is much more like a coding interview problem. I could almost make a coding interview problem out of this. It is not like my typical day-to-day -day work. And by the way, fun fact, a lot of Google engineers will actually create coding interview problems that they then give to candidates who are interviewing for a position at Google. They'll create coding interview problems based on real-life problems that they faced at work. And that feature is exactly the type of feature that would lend itself to creating a coding interview problem. So that was the second an example. Now for the third and final example that I want to share with you today. This is another example on AlgoExpert. I worked on it very recently and I'm actually still working on it even today. So taking a quick step back, a lot of you know that last week we launched a lot of new features on AlgoExpert. One of them was a huge revamp of our coding workspace. And you've probably noticed that on the coding workspace, we have this new feature called Quick test. It's available in a few languages, JavaScript, Python, C++, and Java. Java's almost done for all of the questions. And basically, it allows users to write up test cases really quickly and execute their code against those test cases super quickly to basically see if they have any bugs. The reason it's super quick is because instead of having to write the full test case in code, like our normal test cases, here they just have to write the input in JSON format, JavaScript object notation. Now this is where things get interesting. Imagine one of our questions on AlgoExpert that takes in as input a complex data structure like a binary tree or a linked list. How does this quick test feature that allows users to write JSON, how does that actually work behind the scenes? Because we're effectively taking that JSON input that the user writes and feeding it 
into their code, passing it as a parameter to their code, executing their code, and spitting out the output. But their code doesn't actually expect JSON, right? Let's take the reverse linked list question. That question expects a linked list data structure, not a JSON object. So what we have to do behind the scenes is we have to take that JSON object, transform it into code, into a real linked list in JavaScript, for instance, or in Python or in C++, feed it to your code, your user code, run your code, execute it, then get the output of your code, which is going to be another linked list in the case of reverse linked list, and retransform that linked list that's code into a JSON object that we can then display on the UI. That, my friends, involves writing a lot of algorithms. The entire flow of this feature, which involves a lot of transformations from JSON objects into code and back into JSON objects, all of this relies on algorithms. Algorithms that we've been writing, and these algorithms are really the closest thing I've ever done in my entire three-year software engineering career to algorithm-style problems like coding interview problems. We're literally traversing binary trees, traversing linked lists, constructing them, having to handle cycles, all kinds of complicated algorithm stuff, the kind of stuff that you do in coding interview problems. It's been super fun, but it's really been almost shocking to us. We've even told ourselves, wow, these are like great coding interview problems. Like we're thinking of taking some of the work that we've had to do and basically transforming it into coding interview problems to put on AlgoExpert because they're just interesting problems. But so this is a really great example of having to write algorithms for a seemingly normal software engineering feature. Because remember, here I'm not talking about writing the actual solutions to the problems on AlgoExpert. No, here I'm talking about enabling this quick test feature. And that has involved a lot of algorithm writing. So I hope that with these three examples that I've shared with you today, you can start to understand in what scenarios you might find yourself implementing coding interview style algorithms on a normal software engineering job. If I had to quantify or estimate how often you'll find yourself doing this type of work, I would probably say, I don't know, maybe once per year, you know, during one project that takes maybe, I don't know, 12 weeks, you know, a quarter. It's probably not gonna be more often than that, but I would be surprised if you don't find yourself writing or implementing algorithms at least that often. But either way, that's all I've got for you in this video. I really hope that you found it informative. Don't forget to smash the like button if you did. By the way, I've got a proposal for you here. If you're still watching this video and you found it pretty interesting, interesting enough to watch, and you have not smashed the like button, try doing it now. You've got nothing to lose. The only thing that's gonna happen is that little thumbs up button is gonna turn blue. That's all that's gonna happen. It'll be a liberating experience. Try it. And if you don't like how it makes you feel, you can unsmash it. But in all seriousness, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.